All right, we are good to go. Great, thank you. It is now seven o'clock and our meeting is called to order. And pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law 30A section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. <laughs> this meeting of the finance committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can, public can adequately access to proceedings in real time via technological means. Members of the public who would like to participate in the meeting via Zoom can do so by clicking this link. Members of the public who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may also do so via telephone by dialing 1-646-558-8656 and enter meeting ID 839-6941-5854. Then press pound and press pound again at the next voice prompt. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment. By following the steps previously noted, then press star nine on the telephone keypad or using the raise hand function on Zoom. This will notify the meeting host that the wisher call, call wishes to speak. In the event that despite our best efforts, we are not able to provide for real-time access, we will post a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as we are able. And I'd like to take a roll call, please. Um, John Doherty is excused. Teresa Manganelli present. John Dugas. Present. Marianne Galazzo. Present. Michelle Kincaid. Present. Lee Martinson. I'm present. Bernie Nally. Present. And Kevin Stokes. Present. Thank you. And tonight we have public buildings with George Hooper. Welcome, George. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. For those uh, who don't know me, my name is George Hooper. I am your superintendent of public buildings. And tonight we'll be reviewing our FY22 Public Buildings Department budget. That's on page uh, 51 on your expenditure detail in your report. We'll start off with the personnel services. Uh, the Wilmington Public Buildings Department has uh, 47 employees and one department head for a total of 48. We have three non-represented all others are asked me one and two members. And this, uh, in this account, there is a slight increase in this account due to uh, contractual uh, increases. And we also added a new position, uh, a new night relief custodian to this department. Uh, this will help us um, with some increases in duties that we've had. As you know, the um, art center is now for student services for the school department. We take care of uh, the entire Little West. Uh, and this also covers for when uh, staff members are out, injuries, vacations, or illness. Uh, this is uh, an increase of 1.9%. Uh, do I have any questions on that? All right, my um, overtime is level funded this year. I think what we have is going to be ample to handle what we have for, for next year. Uh, and my seasonal, which is our summer help, is also level funded. My next item is my utilities. First item on that is our fuel account. There is a decrease in the fuel account we estimate a usage of 250,000 gallons of uh, number two heating fuel uh, at $2.06 per gallon for $515,000 and an estimated of 295 therms of natural gas. We heat with 
oil and gas throughout the town. Uh, the, the therms is a blended cost of $1.10 per therm. That's $324,500 for a total budget of $839,500. That's a decrease of 106,000 or 11.2%. Um, the library, one of the uh, reductions here is we're also converting the library over. We're just about complete. As a matter of fact, the National Grid will be there tomorrow with us as we fire up our dual fuel system, which is new over at the library. Uh, that'll help us out with additional savings. For some information on how the conversion save for us, when you have, uh, when you go from oil to gas, one therm of natural gas equates to about 0.71 gallons of number two heating fuel, where we use 295,000 therms of gas. Uh, that would equate to about 212,000 gallons of number two heating oil at a cost of $2.06. That would be $436,939, a difference of $112,439 in savings by converting to natural gas. Uh, Judd, question, Bernie sure. Nelly. Go ahead, Bernie. On the uh, gas cost prices, uh, how do they look? I've heard that they're starting to go up. Uh, are we uh, in the contract anyhow? So, What we do is we uh, gas is provided by uh, Nash, uh, National Grid. Uh, you have to buy by the supplier on that, but uh, you can go out and uh, find out through distribution. You can you can contractually find different pricing, and that's what we do through a conservative energy group. Mm -hmm. We'll go out and we'll solicit and see what we can get best for prices. So over the past few years, that's why we're still at a blended cost of a about a dollar ten per therm. That mm -hmm. hasn't increased since last year, and I don't expect it to this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why you have the decrease. Uh, electricity, uh, I've level funded it, even though uh, there may be an anticipated, uh, excuse me, anticipated increase. The public building department continues to improve its energy uh, efficiency replacements by installing energy efficiency equipment, lighting, LED lighting, and working with the RMLD. Uh, we use approximately 1.4 million kW in usage across the town. Utilities. Uh, this is uh, the account that covers our alarm monitoring intrusion uh, equipment, our repairs, and our LPG for our generators. There is a slight decrease in here. It's $31,000. Um, or a 1.6% decrease. <coughs> Next is our maintenance expenses, our HVAC repairs. Uh, this is level funded. Even though uh, we're finding that, uh, you know, it, it costs more. We have our filter changes, of course, our belts, our motors, some of our aged equipment. Um, it, it does get tougher and tougher to find some of this um, discontinued equipment or in, as we increase technology, the cost of the equipment continues to increase. But by performing these major uh, improvements in-house, we're able to keep a lot of our costs down. So I'm level funding this account. Our school expenses, there is a slight increase of $5,000. Um, this increase is mainly due to increasing costs, especially with COVID and everything, the way things are going right now. Material costs, equipment costs. Uh, this is for cleaning, sanitizing equipment and supplies. This also covers life safety, testing repairs, elevator inspections, uh, paper products, uh, supplies for carpentry, plumbing, and electrical supplies. This is a 2% increase. Have any uh, questions on that? <laughs> Next item is the uh, asbestos account. 
This is level funded. There is no increase in this account. Due to some regulatory changes, we've decided to make our large projects part of our capital plan. You'll see this further in my report. Uh, the budget is maintained at its original amount, which is used for training, testing, uh, recording, and removal. Expenses of town building, there is a decrease in this account of $7,000. This was originally budgeted last year when we remodeled the kitchen for the fire department. These uh, cabinets that were existing, original to the building, the project was completed in-house. So this will be a decrease of 3.2%. I do have a couple of pictures later on down the line. I'll have John O'Neill show you. Uh, like I said, we, we've done a majority of this work in-house. Uh, we actually also had the cabinets provided by the Department of Correction that help us keep the cost down. So, mm -hmm. Next item is our miscellaneous facilities account. This is level funded. This was put in place for any unexpected uh, repairs, large cost repairs that uh, we didn't anticipate to be covered in this budget. Our roof repairs, this item has been level funded across. We do a majority of this work. This is not for entire replacements. This is for just that, roof repairs. Any leaks that we might find in the buildings, we go through and my carpenters are able to go up, identify it, and this provides them the equipment and supplies that is needed. Training and conference. That's level funded. This is uh, for continuing education of uh, my uh, building systems manager, my assistant, and myself. This, uh, this provides for MCPPO training for the department, professional groups, and conferences. So across the board, if you take a look at the, the budget and overall, um, there is a decrease of $48,112, or 0.92% de decrease in the overall public buildings department budget. Good job. Thank you. Before I continue on, did I have any questions? Well, I'm going to ask John. John, you have the uh, slides. I'd just like to show him some of the uh, kitchen. This here, what you see is the senior center kitchen originally. I don't know if you've had the pleasure to be in there. Um, this is the old cabinets, uh, the old floors you go through. Next slide. Ooh, this here wow. is what it, this is what it looks like now, currently today. That's beautiful. It's very nice. Yeah, and that uh, we reuse the old stove. Next slide, please. There's the uh, sinks that were original to it as we went through. Um, next slide. We replaced this with all new plumbing. Like I said, the floor has been done, it was painted throughout. These are the cabinets that were also provided by the Department of Correction. They do a great job over there and they help us out. Very next nice. slide, please. This was their buffet station. This is what, as you can see, it was a folding table that uh, they used over in the corner. And when they'd come in, they'd put their donuts and uh, coffee on top of that. Next slide. This is what it looks like now. And they have a co they have a coffee maker that's been plumbed in and it's all set up there. It's handicap accessible and uh, you can't notice it, but all the doors and cabinets lock. Um, uh, as I said, the fire department, which is next, Oh, excuse me, sorry. These are also some uh, double doors that used to go into some of the rooms that they had uh, in the center post, kind of restricted some access to the rooms. So we decided to take those out and go with some French doors. Uh, next slide, and this is what they look like today. Very nice. So they open up and you have a full access. Uh, again, this is done in-house by my uh, carpentry staff, my electricians, um, and everybody's gotten in there and done some painting. So uh, they've done a really nice job. Yeah. Next slide. 
This is the fire department's kitchen. Uh, this was original. These are some of uh, the veneered cabinets that they had. And um, yeah, this is, as you can see, it's kind of worn. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. And this is the way the kitchen looks now today. Nice. Next item to be done here will be the uh, floor. I'm working with the fire chief and uh, we'll get that completed. That's just some of the work that uh, our, work, our public building department uh, people do. Besides the uh, custodial crew that we have, this is uh, our maintenance staff. Um, George, do the kids for the fire department, do they come from the corrections? Department? Yes, they did. Yes, I'm working with them to uh, a couple of other projects that I'm working with is the uh, um, dispatch. We're going to do their kitchen at over. I'm also working with the library to do their staff over, their staff room over. So there will be a few other projects. And I, I have a feeling once people see this, they'll, they'll come to me with other ideas, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> so how does the pricing um, utilizing their materials work out? Well, to, to give you an idea, we went to, um, we looked at Home Depot, we looked at some other cabinet manufacturers and they were literally half the price for twice the wow. quality because all that, um, all that material you look at was solid, not veneer and all their hinges are stainless steel and ball bearings and uh, it's, it's, it's quality stuff. The ones that you saw uh, at the senior center was all hand routed in to a one piece maple, you know, cabinetry. Oh. That one at the senior center was uh, also, they do countertops and it was for mica where the fire department was actual butcher block that they put mm. together. So, and where they have, they are uh, department of correction. You don't have to go out and do any state bid. They're all pre-approved and they're all contracted. So it's, it's such a uh, savings. And it's so helpful. So as you can see here, it's, a, it's pretty quality stuff. You know, it looks it for sure. Oh, it really is. If you get a chance, if we ever get to open the senior center back up, we'll go <laughs> over and take a look at it. You know, mm. someday. Yeah. All right. So I do have some capital improvement projects. Page seventy-two and seventy-three. All right, the uh, Shawsheen School. I have uh, I'm put, I have a request in for eighty five thousand um, dollars. I have about twenty four thousand square feet of roof that uh, is it's tar and gravel roof. The age goes from fifteen to fifty years old. Um, I'm looking to go in for engineering design services for this twenty four thousand square feet, so we could do some replacement. There's four sections. This here will remove that tar and gravel in the insulation. It'll replace it, bring it up to code, and we'll get a 20 to 30 year warranty and the entire roof will be covered. But just to be clear on that, the 85 is for the design that next year we would be coming back for uh, an appropriation for the actual replacement of the roof. Right. The design will also give us an idea of what the cost is gonna be for the appropriation. The next item is the uh, Wuben Street School, similar to what we did over at the Shawsheen. I'm looking to replace all the ACM uh, ceiling tile. That's asbestos containing material. Uh, it's 50,000 square feet plus of the ceiling tile and I'll replace it with new. It's original to the building. It's time for this stuff to go. Like I said in previous, uh, on my asbestos account, new regulatory, uh, guidelines really keep us from touching this product or being able to work around it so uh, this is our last school to have the ceiling tiles in there so 
and this will be for $527,000. This will help us with the design, the monitoring, and air sampling for safe removal of that product. And, and again, I think it's important to note, just so uh, for anybody who's certainly the finance committee and anybody who may be watching that the um, the asbestos ceiling tiles are encapsulated, so there's no danger to the occupants of the building, but clearly one of the things that George runs into, if um, there's any cabling that needs to be done above the suspended ceiling, it's not you know, easy to just remove those tiles because there has to be, uh, there's a particular protocol that has to be followed. So um, this, this will eliminate that issue. Do I have any questions on that? No questions. Right. And also, as you may or may not know, uh, we have our, our new town hall building, school building admin committee that we've got together. And through our facility master plan, uh, they identified, and I'll quote on this, uh, modest community growth. The town's population growth is expected to be moderate over the course of the next two decades based on multiple demographic studies and projections. As a result, the overall demand for typical town services could be expected to grow at a similar modest pace. This will require some expansion need for the services and facilities over time. And at our past town meeting, the town voted to approve 955,000 for a feasibility study schematic design for a new town hall school admin building. This is the first task of this project. Uh, we, we identified an owner's project manager under the Mass General Law 159, public construction. Anything over 1.5 million requires an OPM. Uh, on October 28th, we advertised a request of qualifications, um, which were due on November 19th. 15 firms responded. Each firm responded, was reviewed by a committee member at the last meeting. We came up with a recommendation for an OPM, which is still in negotiations. And then we have our senior center. Also from a identified in our facility master plan, we have a disproportionate growth of uh, the senior population. I guess uh, people don't wanna really leave Wilmington. Yeah? So the senior population segment in Wilmington is expected to grow significantly and disproportionately relative to other segments of the population. It is reasonable to expect that related growth in the demand of programs and services associated with the senior center and, potent and potentially veteran services. And as in the past town meeting, the town voted to approve $650,000 for a feasibility study schematic design for a new senior center. And uh, we are in the first stages of that. Also, we do have an OPM uh, that is on board with us, and we are currently looking at architectural design firms. Once we identify that, we'll be able to put the feasibility study together, and we'll identify a location for this new senior center, and the next steps will be to uh, develop a design. This will give us an idea of construction costs. Thank you very much for that update. Does anybody have any questions regarding the budget or the update that we just received? Are there any um, questions from the public? We currently do not have any members of the public online. Thank you. Okay, George. Thank you very much. Madam okay. Chair, I would just uh, add on that capital item, the 527, 527,000, the plan is to uh, use free cash for that uh, piece. Thank you. Okay. Okay, George, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good job. And uh, I want to also say, you know, I, I'm on a lot of these committees and I, I understand uh, what it takes to get out there. And I know you're a volunteer group. So thank you much, very much for volunteering your time. I appreciate the effort being a town resident myself. I know that uh, it takes a lot to do this. So we 
appreciate your efforts that you put into it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay. It's always nice to get positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So our next order of business is to approve the minutes of January 26th and also January 28th. I'm assuming that you received both sets of minutes. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to make a motion on the January 26th or corrections or comments. I make a motion to approve January 26th. Second it, Mary Angelezzo. Okay, that, okay, so. Okay, and I'll just take a roll call. Um, Jonathan? Yes. Mary Ann? Yes. Oh. Lee? Yep. Bernie? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. And Manganelli approves. Okay, thank you. And now the minutes for January 28th. Motion to approve. Seconded. Could I get names, please? Oh, Miriam, motion to approve. Okay. John, seconded. Okay. All right. Um, so, John and Miriam, uh, Michelle? Approved. Lee? Yes. Bernie? Bernie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Manganelli says yes. All right, terrific. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you to um, Chris for the hard work she did on these meetings, minutes, um, particularly the first. It's very lengthy and involved and um, you always do such a wonderful job, Chris, that um, you just kept working at it exactly the way you wanted it, which is um, amazing. So thank you very much and hopefully ongoing for the rest of the, the meetings, it won't be quite as bad. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. All right, um, are there any other questions from the, from the board or comments? No? Okay. All right, then we'll take a motion to adjourn. Mary Angeleso, motion to adjourn. Bernie Nelly, I'll second that. Okay, Jonathan? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Lee? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Teresa, yes. Okay, terrific. Thank you all very much. We will, are we meeting? We've got a meeting on Thursday and then we're off for a week, right? Is that right? We have a meeting on Thursday? Yes. Yeah, yes. The 11th, yep. And then we don't have another one till the 23rd. Okay, so we don't have a meeting on Tuesday? No. No. Okay. Yeah, we're off all next week, right? Yeah, we're school off. vacation. School vacation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, going on a trip to your uh, upstairs or your downstairs. <laughs> Kevin, are you going to miss Disney World this year? Nope, I'm leaving on Saturday. Oh, <laughs> I will quarantine and I will follow all protocols. Uh, well, have fun. Thank you. Have a good time. Thanks. All right, Thanks. everybody. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, everybody. Have night. a great night. Good night. Good night. Good night.